Hey guys, Joe here at Palm Desert at ECRM's Beauty Week, and I'm here with Ina from IBY Beauty, and she's one of the suppliers that are participating in our Indie Beauty session. So we're gonna talk a little bit about Indie Beauty and what it means to be an Indie Beauty brand, but before that, can you tell us a little bit about your company? Absolutely, thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so IBY Beauty, which is inspired by you, the consumer and the buyer, is an emerging, trending beauty brand. We have accessories, we have beautiful cosmetics, such as the Poolside Palette, which just launched and um, had award-winning reviews by Daily press. Uh, we also have accessories and the whole entire concept of the brand is to have brands and trends and formulations that are really quality ingredients, safe ingredients, we're leaving bunny certified, we don't test on animals, that is affordable luxury. Gotcha and, and uh, talk about a little bit about the products that you have uh, over in your meeting space. Absolutely. So we have brushes, we have accessories, lip glosses, we have lipsticks launching, we have beautiful palettes, we have a palette launching that is on trend with the fashion color schemes every single month for the rest of the year. So we have a Coachella palette that is branded for the desert, desert vibes, poolside, oceans, awakening is launching, super bloom, so really fun, beautiful colors. Cool, something new on a regular basis. Absolutely. Very cool. So as an indie, you've worked both sides actually. In the past you were with a global brand, yep. now you're with an indie brand. So, um, and since this is a, a new session for us, mm -hmm. can you talk, what does it mean to be an indie brand? If you contrast it with your experience in the past, as uh, uh, working for a global brand? Sure. Um, so I think the audience really has to vary depending on what product you're selling. So uh, for example, we know that the wallpaper of retail has really changed and so it has the definition of indie beauty brands and global brands. For example, for a buyer that is more specialty boutique, they have a hundred stores, they will choose boutique uh, emerging brands, indie brands such as Trish McAvoy, Sean Sakai, Ivy why beauty but they're still a global company they're still emerging companies and Sean Takai who's been around for 30 years by uh, Rite Aid or uh, Walmart by might be considered an indie brand yeah. because they're solely owned they're solely controlled it's family-owned business for this conversation which definition are you using for an indie brand so we're using for the definition which is a boutique brand so we're mm -hmm. seeking out maybe even on a larger scale and here's the smart thing that I've noticed actually national buyers doing mm -hmm. and that usually source mass um, brands such as CoverGirl, Revlon, they started to looking at indie beauty brands to garner the clientele of the millennial. Mm -hmm. So they started to incubate certain doors that indie might be popular. Mm -hmm. So let's say a Walmart, for example, their buyer is extremely smart and intuitive with their consumers. So she started shopping brands that were emerging, so indie, and started doing incubations mm -hmm. within certain regions that might resonate with that brand. So she's supporting herself through with CoverGirl or Revlon, and then that consumer is discovering a new brand. So it's building mm -hmm. brand popularity, brand loyalty on that side but still driving the traffic with her main main core gotcha. products and are there uh, specific um, I guess categories or certifications or types of um, products within indie beauty that are resonating with these customers like for example uh, sustainable mm -hmm. sustainable packaging clean ingredients things like that are they trending more towards uh, those areas absolutely I think the consumer is much more educated they can look up anything online they want to be um, have a reference point that is a beautiful website so I think that the consumer is looking for clean ingredients uh, leap and bunny certified no animal testing they want to make sure that they feel good about using the products that they're using and so those are more prevalent trends. with indie brands. Exactly. Those, okay. So uh, what are some of the challenges that indie brands face? Um, I think it's the brands that come in here that are grassroots. They're, you know, they started in the kitchen or mm -hmm. the garage and they don't have the ability to scale up. So ECRM really helps define and refine the brands that have the ability to scale up for the buyer to come in and source that new brand. So what I found with uh, really extremely helpful with ECRM is that they have it mapped out extremely well and they vet not only their brands well that have the ability to scale up even though they're indie, yeah. um, but they also make sure that the buyer, um, it's a relevant buyer that's seeing that brand. So I had a really successful turnout 
at the show. Uh, we had a great engagement meetings. Um, it really lined up beautifully for us. Great. And the opportunities for any brands. Uh, I mean, you touched on some of them before where you mentioned, especially like millennials, the younger generations, mm -hmm. they're, that's, that they're always looking for that discovery, that new item. Yes. And that's kind of the indie brands kind of fill that role. Absolutely. And that drives that consumer forward and it drives that consumer to the store. It was interesting. I was talking to a friend of mine and she said, my son, who's 22, doesn't drive anymore. So mm -hmm. for me, when I'm listening to this, it's like, how are we driving that consumer to shop on our dot com, shop on build brand loyalty so it's also um, thinking of different ways how to market to that millennial yeah. customer and then stores are always going to be relevant I think brick and mortar just because that consumer still has to go in um, to pick up essentials mm -hmm. so and then they discover new brands when they come into the store so I think it has to come full circle um, when we're launching new brands when buyers are sourcing new brands to make sure that the conversation is had that you know do we have the ability to scale up with a certain buyer that has 2,500 stores? Do we have the ability to really push you know, social media and marketing to that retailer to support ourselves through? Um, does the buyer understand that we need a faster turn on our net to make sure that we're getting profit in while we're producing new batches? So I think it has to come full circle with the buyer and it's really having those really open, honest, conversations with them and saying that this is our ability and it's a true partnership with them. So it sounds like there may be a little bit of a learning curve sometimes uh, when you when you deal with some of these brands starting in their kitchen or whatever. Yep. Um, they may we're saying we're seeing a lot of this uh, on the CBD side. You'll mm -hmm. have a lot of these startups and they may be experts on CBD and hemp but they're not experts in dealing with mass retail. So do you see that with some indie beauty brands? Like they need Absolutely. to get that education on, on those points you talked about on how to have those conversations with buyers. Absolutely. And I think a lot of those brands that do have the startup kitchen or garage, what sometimes they fail to do is bringing in a seasoned person that has been in either mass or background in heavy beauty, mm -hmm. and they understand the buyer and the concept and know how to forecast. And that's where I think some brands fall short sometimes and don't succeed because they don't get either the right advice yeah. of how to build out their business strategy and I think that's the most important component for grassroots and emerging brands is making sure that you have a solid business strategy you know and you've done your research to the buyer that you're speaking to yeah. and what their expectation is I think that's a great point especially <clears throat> bringing on some expertise uh, people who know how to deal with the, the mass retailers. Mm -hmm. uh, they may have contacts, they know the brokers, they know everybody they need to know to kind of at least get that conversation going. Absolutely, and you guys are great at doing that. Well, yeah, we like making those connections. So you've been coming to our sessions for a while mm -hmm. uh, uh, with other companies as well as this one. Absolutely. How's your experience been over the years? Um, it's been really positive. I felt like I really grew up in the industry. I felt like ECRM has a lot of the time guided me to a positive direction and given me solutions to um, some, you know, pitfalls we all stumble upon so I found it a great resource it's a pleasure working with you year after year so I've had a great experience excellent and Thank you're you. using range me too right I am I was one of the first people that really supported range me and really supported um, their growth I um, made sure we participated with them right from the get-go so probably before we before acquired, okay, okay, absolutely yeah. acquired right. them so I saw the trend of where the buyer and how they were sourcing um, new products okay so. Perfect. So, last question. What's yes. next? What can we expect from you guys coming down the road? Wow, that's um, a trade that secret. That you're allowed to talk about. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, we definitely are looking towards complexion and okay. really looking at clean, beautiful skin um, and really giving that consumer safe ingredients that she loves to use and that loyalty. So, for us, it's having a 360 approach to engage that customer to really make her fall in love with IBY Beauty inspired by you. Excellent. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you for all that great information. Thank you. And I look forward to seeing you at the next Excellent. one. Excellent. Thank you so all much. Right.